Hi guys, Vertus Education here with the 11th video of the Unreal Development Kit Beginner Series. So in the previous video, we actually went over using preset static meshes inside a UDK, and inside of that I went over the static mesh editor, how to bring one into the scene, and a bunch of the different properties that come with it. However, I only necessarily went over the static meshes that are inside of the content browser, and I didn't really show you how to import your own custom static message, uh, meshes, sorry about that, my tongue slipped anyway having said that in this video i'm going to be showing you how to import your own custom static meshes from a 3d modeling package uh for the sake of a tutorial i will be using uh 3ds max also you need to keep in mind i won't necessarily be teaching you how to model something in a 3d modeling package as it takes a hell of a lot more than just one tutorial and i'm probably going to dedicate a uh a whole series to it in the uh in the near future so anyway you can see my scene i have my little custom static mesh here which looks pretty cheesy but sexy nonetheless and it uh says vertus education on there and that one object is about 2000 tries i'm not necessarily going to optimize it but you know you can see it's definitely custom uh static mesh as uh you know you don't necessarily get anything like that with uh udk so Let's uh, begin and uh, work out how exactly we're going to import our custom static mesh. So as you know, everything you import needs to go through the content browser here. So, you know, we need to find the import uh, selections. Let's go ahead and press import in the bottom left hand corner. And the reason why we're doing this without any files or anything is so that we can actually check the file types that UDK supports for static meshes. So go ahead and check and click this little drop up menu if you want to call it that. And you can and look for what you can see uh, what you can see for uh, static meshes. So the main ones you can see is T3D. ASE and uh, FBX. FBX being the industry standard and for that reason I'm going to be using FBX in this video. Uh, obviously the second most uh, used is ASE and T3D isn't necessarily supported in the export options of uh, many packages so you know usually ASE and uh, FBX are okay to go so you know now we know that we can actually go and open up our 3D modeling package and uh, try to export in that format so keep in mind 3ds Max is going to be slightly slow for me due to the fact that I'm actually running it in my virtual machine as um, it's not necessarily working on my computer at the moment but nonetheless it should suffice for the testing purposes that we're going to be doing so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to open up my max file I could uh, probably use some of the preset max ones but uh, you know I like to be nice and original hmm apparently I can't open it what is this uh so why don't you want to open Okay, this is weird. So, <laughs> it doesn't want to open. So, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, open up one of the default, uh, one of the default uh, 3ds Max files. Well, oh no, okay, so it doesn't necessarily want to let me uh, open up one of those either because uh, I've lost the location. So I'm just going to quickly make some kind of weird mesh here. I'm going to make some little box and then another box and then another box and some stuff like that okay so there we go I've got two intersecting boxes it's definitely original and uh, unique and it will show that I can export this properly so once you have your model all open then you're ready and comfortable that you want to bring it into UDK just go ahead and uh, find the export option in uh, 3ds Max's case just go ahead and press the big green button in the top left hand corner go to export and uh, just click it and obviously here you get this nice lovely little dialog which allows you to choose where you want to export your file the name and most importantly the file type you can see it's set to Autodesk FBX by default for me due to the fact that I use this uh, format a lot and I would advise you to use it so I'm just gonna save this on uh, my desktop as lol test there we go. Okay, so it turned out at lol twist. Okay, anyway, if I press save, it's going to give me another little dialog with a whole bunch of additional options. Guys, there is tons and tons of different options for uh, different static, for when you're exporting a static mesh. For example, you can choose to include animation sets, you can choose to include materials, you can choose to have lights, cameras, and all that good stuff. But um, anyway, 
usually by default it should be fine. Other than that, you might have to turn on smoothing groups if applicable. But you know, let's just go ahead and uh, press OK. Make sure that you have read through all of the different uh, export options as they are really significant and uh, need to be taken into careful consideration. I will most likely um, go over some of those in a separate series dedicated to 3ds max modeling so you don't really have to worry about it in too much detail now so obviously i've got my nice lovely little file on my desktop or i should have there we go so now i need to get this onto my normal computer but i've already moved another file so all should be good but uh, obviously if you're not using it inside of a virtual machine like I am, you won't necessarily have to uh, go over that transition. So I'm just going to go ahead and close my virtual machine now. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try import my mesh into UDK. But before I do that, I'm just going to quickly restart UDK just just so that... Um, uh, just so that the mesh I imported previously isn't in there. And I didn't necessarily save it, so hopefully all should be good. So, you know, I'm just going to open up my map again any second now as soon as uh, it finishes loading. Okay, here we go. So, I'm just going to go to the import button in the content browser as usual. and going to navigate to my desktop and uh, choose a mesh that we've created in the FBX format uh, previously. Here you can choose your package name. This is essentially where your mesh will be in your package, the group inside of the package, and most importantly, the name. And also, similar to inside of... Uh, 3ds max where you have export options here you actually have a bunch of import options uh, some of these are very similar to what you find in 3ds max so you're probably gonna have to uh, uh, sort of make sure that these are in sync with what you have chosen inside of uh, 3ds max obviously there is some that uh, aren't necessarily in there and vice versa for both versions but you know just make sure uh, these are all right by default i'm pretty sure they'll be fine so i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to press ok to all and uh, i might get this little pop-up as i said smoothing groups isn't selected you might have to do that but anyway now it should be inside of your content browser you can drag Sorry, you can open it up in your static mesh editor as so, you can see it. However, there is one thing to note, you can see that it has come in two different parts. Uh, FBX does that, it uh, splits up the different parts of your mesh if you don't necessarily make it all one editable poly or something like that. So just make sure you uh, merge everything together before exporting if it's a static mesh. Obviously, if it's going to be a skeletal mesh, then you might want to have those different separate parts just to make sure that... Uh, just to make sure that the animations work and is all nice and dandy. Anyway, you know, I can drag these into my scene now. I can play around with different uh, things inside of a static mesh editor. For example, if I want to, I can go ahead and add collision, seeing as I don't actually have any collision at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's really that simple. Bringing in your own custom static mesh is really, really easy. And uh, there's not too much to know about it, so I'm not necessarily going to go and uh, add in the text. It might be a little difficult to get in there because uh, it's a spline, the back's in an awkward position, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. But nonetheless, you can see we have our own custom static mesh inside of UDK, and it, you know, sort of adds a little bit of extra life to our scene. Also, one last thing before I end off the video, uh, I do want to note that you need to make sure that you save the package before you actually close UDK, otherwise you're going to lose everything you've imported and you're going to get a whole bunch of different errors once you uh, try to open up the level again. So to do that, just go ahead and find the package. If you remember, I saved it in my package and it's going to be here. So I can just go ahead and right click on this and press save and it will save it and you can choose the location and uh, all should be good and dandy and uh, keep in mind I'm not necessarily going to be saving it as I don't actually want it it's a pretty bad model but obviously you are going to make sure that you do so thanks for watching comment like and subscribe and don't forget to check out the next video in which I will be doing something okay I can't remember anyway I will see you in the next video goodbye